Hello and welcome to the introduction PowerPoint to Higher Computing Science here at Woodmill High School. Who are we? In the department we have Mrs Jeans, Mrs Norman, that's myself, Mr McMahon. We also have Miss Harrower, who, although a full-time uh, guidance teacher, is also a fully qualified computing science teacher and often helps out. And there's Mr Stewart. Mr Stewart is a principal teacher curriculum for mathematics and computing science. Uh, so he's the one in charge and that's who you get sent to if you don't behave. Here is the um, course for higher computing science, which fundamentally is the same as the uh, National 5 course. We have four units, the web, software and database design and development units, and also the computer systems units. Now, the web, software and database follow the same um, sequence as in National 5. We have analysis, design, implementation, testing and evaluation for each of them. And at computer systems, we've still got data representation, computer structure, the environmental impact and security precautions. As far as the assessment is concerned, it's also identical to National 5. However, you guys didn't get an opportunity to do it. The assignment will be eight hours practical assignment for web software and databases. It's out of 50 marks and it's worth 31.25% of your entire qualification. The exam is out of 110 marks uh, at higher. It lasts for two hours. Now, I just want to show you a little bit of the extra stuff that we move on to, just to give you kind of the bigger picture. So in the web section, what we do is we actually move on to websites which have got a lot more web pages and more levels. So much more sophisticated websites. Um, the appearance of each individual page is also more sophisticated and the positioning of all the items on the pages is um, sort of side, side by side. We space things out, we use things like um, padding and margins and it, it just looks much, much more attractive and more realistic. We're going to have horizontal navigation bars um, that highlight each option when hovered over. Uh, perhaps the background colour changes or the text colour changes and then there'll be a drop down menu would also appear to the next level down. We're going to split our web page content into more than just divisions. We'll have headers, footers, nav and main. We're going to add forms to our website or onto our web page. Uh, you'll be familiar with that for if you're ordering something online or ordering a, a newsletter, for example. And you will have the opportunity to add in text uh, or numbers, use radio buttons uh, and also validate what the user inputs. For example, you yourself, if you are trying to order something online, you know that you have to put in the card number. There's a little red star. That would be a presence check. We're going to move on to more sophisticated use of JavaScript so that our page content can do lots of exciting things. It will change as you move the pointer over it. Uh, a picture could change to a completely different picture. It could go over a piece of text and the text background colour um, or, or the foreground colour could change. Uh, or it could be over an image and it gets bigger or it gets smaller. And then when you move the pointer away, it reverts back to what it was originally. And we're also going to look at more complex testing of our websites. As far as software is concerned, we're now going to compare the iterative development process, which is analysis, design, implementation, testing and evaluation, with what actually happens in the real world. And that's using the development of uh, using agile technologies. That's what really happens. We're going to add in some more details into our analysis of our programs. We're going to add data flow to the design of our programs. The data structures that are new are going to be parallel one-dimensional arrays, which, to be honest, I think you guys have already done. We've maybe had an array of people names and then an array of their marks. But we're also going to look at the data structures of records and then arrays of records. We're going to look at modular programs with parameter passing. This is one of the big parts. We're going to split our programs up into sub-programs or procedures and functions and then because the program is split into different parts, you have to pass the variables in between these sub-programs and functions. And we do that with something called parameter passing. 
There's going to be more predefined functions. We're going to look at functions that deal with uh, strings. We're going to look at functions that maybe give you an ASCII value or vice versa to get back to character. And we're going to look at more standard algorithms beyond the input validation, traversing an array and running total within loop that you looked at at uh, National 5. We're going to look at finding the maximum, finding the minimum, count occurrences and linear search. Oh dear. Uh, we're also actually going to look at file handling. Now, file handling is very important in uh, programming, and it's it's more, again, of a real-world example. Uh, all the programs that you guys have made up until now, they, they, they're kind of just live while you're using them, and when you close the program, you lose whatever results or outputs the program has. That's not very realistic. In the real world, you might, for example, have a game, and when the player plays the game, they then have a score. And it would be good if we could then save that score in a separate file and later on when other people are playing the game, the scores can be loaded in and we could have, a, you know, who's the highest scorer. We're going to look at some more sophisticated debugging techniques and we're also going to change uh, evaluation to look at things, uh, sorry, to include usability and maintainability of your program. For databases, we're going to look at more complex relational databases that have got three or more tables, usually four. We're going to look at relationships beyond one to many. We're going to look at one to one and many to many. We're going to look at compound keys and the design of queries and also the SQL of queries is going to be a lot more detailed. We're going to introduce wildcards, aggregate functions, computed values, aliases and grouping. For computer systems, which is where we're going to begin, um, we're going to look. Aha! Uh -huh, we're going to look at negative binary numbers using a technique called two's complement. We're going to look at text representation using Unicode uh, as opposed to ASCII. You might know that one already. We're going to look at the fetch execute cycle, the factors that affect computer system performance, like cache or the data bus width. Uh, we're going to look at the environmental impact of intelligent systems look into the Computer Misuse Act, tracking cookies, look in more detail at DOS attacks, the symptoms of an attack, the reasons why people might do an attack, and also how encryption can be used to secure the transmission of data. So that's uh, just to give you a little sort of bigger picture overview of where we're, we're moving on to. This would have been the year plan, which I meant to delete, but it's still here. Uh, normally we start with web, move on to software, uh, do computer systems sort of at last gasp just before the prelim. Then you would have your revision in the prelim in January. Uh, databases would be just the same as at National 5. We'll do them in Feb, do that in February and uh, to March. Your assignment will be in March. And then revision and final exam would follow on April 2. Now I've got May here, but to be honest, the exam this year was going to be in June, uh, 2nd of June. Uh, I don't know when it is next year yet. Uh, now, computing science workload assessments. Each unit has got a number of theory and or practical tasks which will track how you're doing and all units of work will be assessed to check your level of understanding and provide evidence for the level you'll end up sitting. We now understand quite clearly uh, the value of keeping track of how you guys are getting on so that we can send estimates of your future performance. Homework. Now, you're doing nothing but working from home at the moment, but it could take many forms. Worksheets, revision, reading, research, watching videos, etc. And uh, homework would be given out per unit. Some of the large units might have a number of sections. Your first task for me is to organise your work from home into separate folders. Now, I didn't quite say it there, but we're going to start with computer systems at the moment. A web, a little bit problematic because I'm not sure how many of you are going to have access to create the practical implementation of websites. So we're going to start with computer systems. Now, whether you're saving your work to OneDrive or a USB memory stick or your own computer, eventually it's going to be transferred into your own file directory at school. So you really need to start organising your work very sensibly so that it can go neatly into school resources. That's your first task. Scholar. Now, Scholar is an online resource provided by Heriot Watt University for many of the certificate subjects taught in Scottish schools. I think it's actually about 37 of them at the minute. 
you're encouraged to utilise this resource to augment your higher computing science studies because every different resource that you can look at, research, is going to help you to learn. And if you can learn the information, then hopefully you'll be able to uh, do well in your assignments, your assessments, and ultimately in your exam and the practical assignment. Now, during the current situation, this resource is actually made available to all Scottish pupils for all subjects without schools having to register the pupils. So, there's been emergency access uh, granted to Scholar courses. Now, this is the information that has come from Scholar. All students at Woodmill High School registered with Scholar are now able to access all of their courses using the Display Other Courses feature by using the Glow tile to access Scholar or by logging in using their normal account details. Now, because you guys are mostly fifth year, I am assuming that you don't already have a Scholar login. So you come into this, there may be a small number of learners who have not yet been registered on our system, but who still require access. This is actually happening in the middle of May. However, you guys, such students can access the courses using the username and password listed below. These account details should only be used by Woodmill High School pupils, and they don't actually provide full access to the reporting and progress tracking features provided by Scholar, which means that the teachers can't keep a check on what you're up to. But we will. And there is the username and the password. Now, I want you guys to have a go at this. This is your second task from my introductory video. I want you to find your way into Scholar. It's really important you let me know if you have been able to achieve this or not. Find your way to higher computing science material. Have an explore to see what is there for you. Um, and obviously, uh, maybe have a good look at the computer systems section because that's where we're starting. And finally, communication. You must communicate with me. The best way is simply to add a comment to any assignment and show my homework that you're not sure about and I will respond. You could also email me at jane.norman-qh5.gov.uk and the work that you prepare should be submitted to show my homework. I don't really want you emailing stuff that's work because then it's not being recorded and show my homework that you have submitted it. Also, could you try and make sure that you use the standard file formats, for example, .rtf, I'm struggling here with an antique Windows 7 computer, um, but I do have access to the Microsoft suite of programs, but I don't have access to dot pages, which is something to do with Macs, I think. One of the things that you can do is you can take photographs and you can upload JPEGs on to show my homework. You know, so if you've done something on paper, <clears throat> don't have to worry about not having a scanner or a printer or anything like that. Just take it, if you can, take a photo on your phone and upload that. And it's very important for me that I understand what resources you have or you don't have available at home. So if you don't have the use of a laptop or a computer, please let me know because we can get paper versions of the material delivered to your home so that you can access the course. And that's everything. So I will be also posting up uh, your first piece of work to do with computer systems. But don't forget that there's a couple of little tasks and I want some comments letting me know how you have got on. Good luck, guys.